It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today's video is a little bit different because the keyboard I'm actually looking at technically isn't a mechanical keyboard. But as the title of this video is probably going to say, it is actually in fact a cherry made keyboard. And so uh, I thought, why not? And yes, while the focus of my channel and our content here generally is mechanical keyboard related, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to have a look at some other keyboard kind of products and items, uh, especially since we know that Cherry has a long history of making mechanical switches. Now, this particular keyboard is not mine. A work colleague of mine has been looking for a keyboard like this to use with a lot of macros. They play flight simulators and it took them a while to actually score this. They picked this up for $40 Australian on eBay, pretty much brand new in the box. And we'll get to see why this keyboard was of interest to him. But he said, hey, look, check it out. I scored this keyboard. Would you be interested in reviewing it? And I said, I've never actually had a Cherry manufactured keyboard in front of me before, so why not? Let's have a look. Now, I'm going to switch over to the desktop and we'll be able to check it out. This side up. Now, this thing is a beast. It is, it is huge. Of course, this is just the box. But that said, the overall keyboard itself is really, really large. This is a Cherry G86 series point of sale keyboard. Now, here is the label. There we go. It's a SPOS point of sale G86 and then there's a whole bunch of code on the end of that. Um, and date of production seems to be 3150 AS, whatever the heck that is. Now, I actually don't know what that date of production is. And I'm not going to go and barcode scan it. There's nothing really else outside of this because it's just a, a commercial shipping package arrangement. Nothing too special. But let's crack it open and have a look. Now, I already know what this looks like because we had a look at it while we were at work when he brought it over and lent it to me. But um, so inside the package, what you're going to see first off the bat is uh, a cherry logo over here. There's a bit of a, a metal bracket, which I suspect is probably to, to clip or hold something to it. There's some sort of rubber plastic pin things here. And don't lose them. Uncle Brendan's not going to be very happy if you do. And then we have a disk here which has the software drivers and tools plus the install guide most likely for being able to program and actually map the keys to it. Now if we flip up the protective bit here so we can actually get to the keyboard. There it is in all of its... Oh, you getting you get in the way, dear Glory. <laughs> we can actually see uh, what's going on. Hmm? You want to see the camera, do you? We can see that there's our standard sort of 60% layout there. We've got a whole bunch of macro keys along the top. There's a numpad here, and there's actually a touchpad down here as well. Now, if you let Daddy get it out, then you can you can press with it some. Can I have those back, please? Thank you. Uh, uh, uh. You can see how keen she is on being able to play all of this. Now there is actually some details and instructions, sort of a quick guide in the bottom there. It's USB plug-in you can put in. You can tell the age because it only goes up to Vista as well. Um, 1.85 meters for the actual cable. Hey, 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 don't damage the box. It's not daddy's, okay? So you need to be a little bit patient, all right? Let's just be careful with it all. Okay, so let's just move the box over to the side. Thank you. Okay? Okay, let's pull out the keyboard. There it is. There it is. Now, you can kind of already hear it that uh, she's clicking and, well, touching it anyway. It is in fact a rubber dome keyboard, but what I really like about this is it has a very strong sense of tactility for a rubber dome. It has very resounding response in terms of the thuck. 
and that's just with uh, my daughter's pressing, not even high speed sort of typing at all. So we've got a very large range of keys that you can actually remap. Now, of course, if you don't need any of these, you're probably going to be able to remap that numpad as well. And this is where a set like, for example, the Signature Plastics Relegendables would actually work really well. This touchpad here, you've got left and right mouse buttons as well, so you can actually zoom around and use that instead of a mouse, which is perfect for a point of sale keyboard. Look at you. Hmm? You've got control, win, alt keys. You've also got some uh, weirdly placed arrow keys, so up, down, over here, and left and right. Hmm. Do you like the feeling of that? Yeah? And a very short spacebar indeed as well. It's quite a heavy unit. Now I do have the scales here. I'm just going to move you a little bit, my dear, so I can... That is going to get some scales, okay? And we're going to weigh the keyboard, all right? So let's just move that off for the moment. We'll put that on there and turn it on. So let that tear up. Oh. And let's put the keyboard on. And it weighs 1.337. So it's a good, that's what? Uh, it's a good three pounds, about three pounds of weight, funnily enough. It's about the same much weight as a Signature Plastics grab bag. So it's pretty pretty hefty. Now, if we actually have a look at it from the underside, there's nothing terribly special about it. There's no feet. You can't raise it in any particular way. But there is those two bits of plastic that I'm talking about here that was in the packet. It looks like that they should be able to fit into those sockets so you do get a bit of angle on it. But there's also holes down here which I think allow you to actually mount it to an actual sort of counter arm system type of thing. We have some cable routing here, so you can go straight up the middle as it is by default, or you can go to the left and to the right. And in terms of the general thickness, it's actually on par to sort of a standard keyboard, I would actually say. Now, I am going to pop a keycap off just so we can see what it is. It is it is rubber dome from what I can tell uh, from looking at desk authority and there it is so it's uh, camera's kind of gone out of focus there yeah you can see that that hollow socket there it is a rubber dome but that said it's very very good that actual sensation that rubber dome sensation is is lovely now there's some white stuff in here It's not really focusing very well here on the camera, but uh, it might actually, there we go, so there's some white stuff in there. I think that might be some lubricant, some factory lubricant, which would probably explain also the sensation because if all of these keys are actually internally lubed, that would be pretty cool. Now I did have a quick look on the internet and on Death Authority. They said that the G86 series, which is where this keyboard comes into play, is actually also uh, spill resistant or spill proof so not that I'm going to test it but it means you know if you were using this as a counter like at the movies or in a cafe or something like that and you were to accidentally spill a drink it should survive just fine that said there's no particular sort of vents or slots at the front at all or even on that front bevel that would allow liquid to come out unless if it's these holes on the bottom that I showed earlier you really like the feel of that, don't you? Yeah? Can Daddy try typing on it? Yeah? Okay. Do you want to just sit back a little bit? All right. So Daddy's going to give it a go. And... It's got a really nice sense of bounce to it. Are you trying to copy Daddy? Alright, I'm going to put the microphone down so people can hear what's going on. And let's go again. Alright, shall I let daddy? Okay.
So while it doesn't have the same sort of deep-seated thock sounds as you would expect and get from, say, a HHKB or even the Leopold series keyboards, it does actually have a really lovely sound to it for a rubber dome, for a plain, ordinary rubber dome. Now, you know, being able to pop these off and re-legend them is of interest to my friend who actually bought this because they can program it for flight sims. So they can log in, they can get into you know their, their console and essentially be able to use it to control flaps and landing gear deployment as well as all sorts of other settings within the game rather than having to go out and create a custom sort of PCB or layout or using you know really awkward control shift macro key type arrangements on a normal keyboard. So there you have it. Here is a Cherry G86 series point of sales keyboard. Hey, what's going on? Hmm? Relax. Um, pretty nifty, good size. It's about a, a 10 kilo size because there's your 60% and then that's where your num, uh, your nav cluster would normally be. And uh, yeah, a little bit deeper obviously because you're going to have the additional rows and that header space probably where a lot of the circuitry is going to be involved with. But um, other than that, hey, stop being so cheeky, you. Yeah. So thanks very much, Brennan, for lending me this keyboard. Uh, if you do see this, I hope you enjoy seeing your keyboard getting beat on by my daughter and the lovely sounds that it produces. Of course, everybody else, thank you, of course, for checking out this video. If you're looking for something with a lot of macro pads pre-built, then this is definitely something that you can try and find on sale for eBay around the traps at a reasonable price. Uh, of course, it does have a CD that contains software and drivers probably also to help you map it as well. So, don't forget, we have our June um, monthly Kibio giveaway. There's going to be a link below for the Gleam competition. Uh, and of course, if we actually haven't hit 2,000 subscribers by the time that this video comes out, then uh, at 2,000 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway for some COS caps that I've got in here. Um, Make sure you go down, hit that like, hit that share, hit that subscribe as well. It's time to go. Are we going to say goodbye? Do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Yeah? <laughs> so, thanks for checking out the video. And of course, until next time, happy clacking.